are going to be changing this, well, we're actually going to be changing both headlight light bulbs. But the reason we are is because the high beam on this bulb is out. Now I'm pretty These are low beams. Both low beams are on. So you could still drive the truck at night. You just have to use low beams the whole time if you want both headlights on. But let's go and put the high beam on. But here's what happens. So that high beam is on and that light is completely out and it's just a bad bulb if it was a wiring issue or a relay or a fuse both of these lights would be out but because this high beam still works and this one does not that tells me 99.99 percent that it's the bulb these are one step above your basic headlight bulb. So this is one step above, there's a regular Sylvania, and this is one step above. So although it says extra vision, I bet it's going to be almost identical to the naked eye. Um, but we'll find out. According to the packaging here, they're guaranteed for at least 12 months use if not you can send it to Sylvania but it says right there that extra vision has a rated life hours of 700 so 700 hours of use and see you see right there it actually shows you right there in the box that this is one step above basic it's not silver star it's not silver star ultra other reviewers have said that silver star ultra burns out really fast and it's not worth the money I'm gonna give these extra visions a shot. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is identify the points where the actual headlight assembly is connected to the truck. There is a bolt here, a bolt here, and a bolt there. Now, if this cover hasn't busted on you yet, mine did a long time ago, so I just tuck it up in there. You won't see that third bolt, so just know where it is, You'd the right way to do it. I did not rip it, it ripped itself, but you would pop this out, flop this down, and then you'd get access to that third bolt. But those covers on me both ripped on both sides just from driving. Now on your truck, you probably don't have a big grill guard like this. Some of you might, if you do, it's not a big problem. You just have to slide this out. You have enough room, slide it out. You probably have to tilt it a little bit, but you can get it out of there and get access to it. If you don't have a grill guard on there, it's just even easier for you. You just slide it straight out. And so you know, all of these bolts are your standard 10 millimeter size. Put it on there and start taking them out. Three total. Okay, I'm back. So you can see what I had to do. This is what connects to the back of the bulb, obviously. You have to push this tab in and then pull straight out. Anyhow, then you have the bulb. This bulb, because it had never been removed, was in there super tight. I could not get it with my hands. I used a pair of pliers. I did break this tab here, but it doesn't matter. It's the old bulb. We're taking it out anyhow. I'm not keeping it. And the new bulb will have all of this on it. So that is replaceable. But there you go. That's the old bulb, which here is the new bulb. Very clean. Also thing to note, it would be smart if you used rubber gloves for this, not because you might catch coronavirus, but you don't want to get any dirt 
on the actual glass part of the bulb. I haven't touched it at all since it came out of the box. If you're very, very careful, you'll be able to do exactly what I'm doing. But if you're not such a careful person, gloves will save you to help you keep from getting dirt on the glass bulb. And the real, the reason that you don't want to have that happen is because if it gets dirt, oil on it naturally from your skin anyhow, it can cause it to burn out faster because it'll get hot. So we're gonna take this, stick it back into place, turn it to the right, put the harness back onto it, slide the whole housing back into uh, its spot here, and then this one should be good to go. Interesting thing to note, this rubber gasket was actually left behind from the prior bulb. I'm trying to put this bulb in and it's not fitting properly and I'm like, Jake, you idiot. What the hell is wrong with you? Like you can't put this simple light bulb in. And then I noticed the gasket from the old one was left behind. It's actually a little bit thicker than the one that's on this bulb, um, but there is already one on this. I, if you look back in the video, you'll see there's a red ring around the inside part of this bulb and it is now in there perfect and tight. The old one, this just peeled away from it and stayed on the housing. And we will go take a look right now at the old bulb and I'll show you that on the inside part that goes into the housing, it's gone. So what would normally happen is this gasket sits on the inside of the bulb just like that and you push it in and turn it and it stays to the housing. This new one, you can see right there, it's already on there. So just be cognizant of that whenever you're changing these and it's in there nice and tight. So we'll take the harness and we'll clip the harness back on. That's on there, good. And this light should be operational again. That light is back in its housing. It's in flush here, so you know that those push pins are in there properly. I just started all three bolts to hold it in because what I'm gonna do is check the light first. So, Turn the lights on. And the light works. Hard to see in the daytime, but you can tell the light works. And do the high beams, high beams. And it works. I'll come back out and see how these look at night, but driver's side's a success. We're gonna repeat the same process for the passenger side, which is the one with the faulty bulb. We have now successfully removed the passenger side housing and headlamp bulb. And as you can see right there on this side, the bulb is damaged, it's burned out, which reconfirms that it was the bulb. Oh, and look, the gasket stayed on the bulb on this one, so I don't have to worry about that. But it was in fact the bulb that went bad, but I'm not gonna complain. This thing lasted a long time. It said like just shy of eight years, it came with the truck. The other one was still good, but its days were numbered clearly. But right there, so just reconfirms that it wasn't a switch or a relay or anything like that, which didn't suspect it to be because it was only one light. If it were both, could it have been two burnout bulbs? Yes, that would have been a major coincidence, but I would have been leading toward another issue. But in this case, it is the bulb. Bulb's burned, it was only one, and we're gonna pop the new one in, put the housing back in just the same as over there and then this job will be done.
there you have it. Everything's tightened down securely. This is a nice little trick. When you're tightening things down, especially on pieces that are made of plastic and you don't want to break the plastic, hold your socket wrench up here because you have less leverage up here. You'll get it, you know, to the correct tightness that you want it to be. Whereas if you hold it down here and you tighten, you have much more leverage and you can easily over tighten and snap a plastic piece that way. So when you're working with plastic pieces, grab it up here and tighten it down. There it is. Passenger side is done. That's the one that had the bulb that started this project. So let's go check them out. Let's hit the switch and make sure everything's good. Still got light. That one's got light. Let's hit the high beams. No, oh, the high beams were on. Well, let's go to low beams. Low beam good. Low beam is good. And we're gonna call that a wrap on the day.